In this video, we will learn how to create a dataset, how to access the geological map, and the tools we have to modify it. In order to create a model as accurate as possible, we need to use all the information we have at our disposal. This is the reason GeoModeler offers a way to integrate information such as boreholes, seismic lines, structural data, and so on into our model. In this case, we will create a dataset of the structural information we have available. This information is stored in an Excel file. Here we have the coordinates for each point, the altitude, the dip, and the strike. Now we will create the dataset. First, we need to select the option New Dataset. Then we need to select a name and the type of dataset we're going to create. Here we can select between boreholes and dip. After selecting the dips option, all available files will appear on the bottom of the screen. Finally, we have to pair the information contained of the file with the attribute required by the platform. If the column name matches the name of the parameter, the platform will automatically pair it. If the platform doesn't recognize the attribute, we have to select it manually just by clicking on the right side and selecting the right attribute. Now, on the main page, we can see the newly added dataset. Now, let's take a look of the geological map. This is the editing interface for our geological map. Here, we can modify the map using three groups of operations. Unit operations will allow us to modify units inside the map. Line operations will allow us to modify the lines inside of the map. And node operations will allow us to modify all nodes in the map. In case you want to hide the nodes, we select this option. First, let's take a look at the unit operations. Here we can split, merge, or edit the existing units. So let's suppose we went to the field and find a new unit inside of the existing blue unit. To create the new unit, we will use the split operation. This will create a blue node that can be used to create a new polygon. Once the nodes turn into red, the new polygon will be added into the map. If the node started from inside of a polygon, the beginning node and the closing node must be the same. And if the node started from an existing node, the closing node must be on an existing node. Now we will edit the newly created polygons by selecting the U option. This will display all the existing units on the right side of the screen. To add a new unit, we will select the option Add or Change Units. This will once again display all the existing units. On the bottom part, we have the option to create a new unit. We must select a name and pick a color for the new unit. We can either choose one from the color palette or choose one from the chronostratigraphic table. Now we select the polygon we want to change and click on the newly created unit. In case we want to undo any changes made to the model, we can click on the undo button. Now let's talk about the merge option. This will allow us to join two existing polygons. This way we can reverse what we did previously. The next set of operations are the ones that allow us to modify the different lines in our map. Folds are represented by black dotted lines in the map. The first operation allows us to create folds on the map by placing nodes. When the fold has been created, the nodes will turn red. The next tool helps us extend an existing fold. We will need to select the nodes of the fold and then we will be able to extend the fold. The next tool allows us to remove the fold from our map. By clicking on any given fold and pairing it with the split tool, which let us split the fold, will let us delete the specific segments of our folds. 
Finally, we have a tool that let us modify our folds. Here, we can add different types of lines, such as veins, folds, or fractures. Also, we can change the name of any folds on the map. Now, let's talk about the node operations. These operations will allow us to add, move, merge, and delete the nodes in the map. The add node operation allows us to place additional nodes on existing lines. The next operation allows us to move existing nodes around the map. You can also join nodes and split them from lines on the map. Finally, we have the tool to remove any node from the map. Now we will learn how to display additional information on the map. We will display the structural information on the map as a layer. First, we need to select the option Set a Vector Layer Foreground. Then, on the right side of the screen, a menu will show the layers for the map. Now, we need to select the Add More Layers option to open the Layers Manager. Here, we have the option to add either vector layers or dataset projections. In this case, we will select the dataset projections. Now we have to add a name to the projection. And then select the dataset we previously created. Finally, we have to check the projection for it to be displayed on the map. We can also add vector layers. In this case, we will add the false axis into the map. Same as before, we will open the layers manager. And now we will select the vector layer option. We need to choose a name for the layer and select the appropriate file. Finally, we have to check the layer for it to display on the map. In this video, we have learned the basics of map editing in GeoModeler and also how to display the additional information we possess on the map. In the next video, we will learn how to create a cross-section.